The topic of creator character is very interesting to me because people are so divided on it. And I certainly understand why. I wasn't even initially going to talk about this because right now there's no indication that the Demon Slayer PS4 game is going to have creator character. So I didn't even really consider it a possibility. But recently I've been getting quite a few comments about the idea of creator character in a Demon Slayer game. And I thought instead of replying to those comments with a half-hearted response, I would instead dedicate an entire video to the topic. Anyone who thinks that this is an easy yes or no question hasn't really thought about it enough. Character creation brings a wide range of pros and cons that we could spend a long time talking about. But here's a rough idea of what that would look like. On the pro side of things, you have people can create characters who didn't initially make it to the roster, and that can be a really exciting thing. If your favorite Demon Slayer character doesn't make it, well, you can always create them as a creator character. On top of that, people can create their own original creations. I love creativity, so I love systems like this, even though I personally don't often create my own characters with creator character systems, I can understand why somebody would have so much fun creating their own original characters in the world of, say, something like Demon Slayer. On top of that, developers can make awesome references to the source material with custom special abilities and clothing based on characters who didn't make the cut. So that's a nice thing, right? You can reference the source material in other ways. And then on the con side of things, you have some pretty damning stuff. It's a huge amount of development time. I can't stress how important this is. The development time required to create a good character creation system is insane. It's not even close to being easy. And if a significant amount of development time goes towards creating a good CAC system, it won't go towards other features. On top of that, balancing a creator character system is near impossible to do without drastically limiting the creative options you give to the player. One of the only ways that I'm familiar with to actually effectively balance a CAC system is to do exactly what Soul Calibur does, which makes it so that if you create a custom character, you have to copy the moveset of an identical character on the roster. So for example, example, if this was a Demon Slayer game we were talking about and I want to make a custom character, I would have to choose somebody on the roster who has that same similar moveset I would want from my custom character. This would be easy to do if I was making somebody in the Butterfly Estate, for example. I could just copy Shinobu's moveset or even Kana-O's moveset. But if I wanted to make something more custom, maybe something from outside of the known characters, well then that's a lot harder to do because I wouldn't be able to mix and match different moves here and there. So that of course comes at the cost of a lot of freedom. You can either give the player a bunch of freedom and allow them to customize different things, but balance is going to be thrown out completely. Because when you make a character that can copy individual moves of other characters, and you can basically make a custom build of your own custom character, well, obviously you're going to be able to find better combinations of moves than the base characters. But beyond all of that, CAC can't be done as an afterthought. If you're going to dump all of that creative and development resources into a creator character system, you likely want to make it a big part of the game. It can't just be like an extra thing that's in the game. So you would probably want to have it be incorporated into story mode somehow, and I doubt that that's something that CC2 would want to do, and I doubt it's something that Aniplex would want to do. CC2's best quality, in my opinion, is their ability to faithfully adapt the anime. They've done this with various games in the past, the cinematics that are in the Storm series and in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot are absolutely beautiful. And sure, you could do that with a creator character system, but you're limiting yourself by quite a bit. Recreating those moments from the manga and the anime is, I think, one of the best parts about every CC2 game. And when you throw a creator character system into that, I think you're going to have a huge group of the audience or consumer base that isn't going to be happy about that direct adaptation being modified. You also have to consider the possibility that a creator character system will come off as quote unquote tacky. The reputation of creator character systems aren't great these days. Less than ideal creator character systems have really drugged the name of creator character through the mud. Jump Force and One Punch Man Hero Nobody Knows comes to mind. And this would be CC2's first attempt at creating a system like that. So while I'm confident CC2 would do a good job, I can't imagine the announcement of creator character would have a positive fan reaction. And you also risk turning off people who aren't currently interested in the game. Maybe they'll never be interested in the first place if you tell them there's going to be a creator character system. Now that goes both ways. They could either be more intrigued or less intrigued. But for the most part, right now, I would say the word of mouth popular opinion is that creator character is certainly not an ideal system to have in your game, regardless of whether that's sound logically or not. But regardless, because of all of that, and because of the development issues we talked about up until this point, you also have to create custom ultimate attacks or steal ultimate attacks from other people on the roster. And when you start doing that, it's, that's where that kind of tacky theme comes along. It just kind of looks like it's thrown together. And really, if your CAC doesn't feel like one of the other characters on the roster, well, then people are going to feel like it's just tacky. I keep reusing that word, but it's the only word I have to describe 
it. I think the safest and wisest move for CC2 would be to just not dedicate any resources to a creator character system because like I said it does take a lot of development time and it's an incredibly risky feature because it's either going to go over very well or it's going to go over very poorly. And I've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure the Demon Slayer series is going to be something that continues to grow, uh, whether it be because of the anime adaptation or a spin-off series or something like that. I think Demon Slayer as a franchise is going nowhere but up. And if that's the case, I don't see why CC2 wouldn't continue to develop more Demon Slayer games with the aid of Aniplex, of course. It just seems like a business no-brainer to me. And I think they want to make the safest decisions possible because of that. If they continue to make more Demon Slayer games, you wouldn't want the very first one to have a negative reputation for any reason. So they're probably going to play it as safe as possible. And I think that's a wise move. And because they're going to want to play it as safe as possible, I don't think we're getting creative character. If that does upset you and you were really hoping for a creative character system, I don't blame you. I completely understand it. My personal preference is for no creator character, but I certainly understand the people that want it. So that's going to be it for me. I hope you were able to enjoy the video about creator character. I had a bunch of people asking about it, so I thought I'd dedicate a video to it. If you did like this video, I appreciate it. If you could leave a like on the video, be sure to have a safe and fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next one.